Welcome to St Alfred's Online. My name is Peter McPherson. Today we begin our service by remembering that it's Anzac Day. Anzac Day is an important day of commemoration and thanksgiving. We pause to reflect on the cost of maintaining our freedoms. We thank God for all who have fought and served on our behalf. And in particular, we remember the more than 100,000 men and women who have died in wars, conflicts and peacekeeping. For many, today is an emotional day. For some, it's a day of great sadness. For others, it's a day of great pride, of a job well done, of service willingly given. And for all of us, it's a day of sober reflection. As Christians, we remember that the world is broken and will remain broken until the Lord returns. We wait in hope for that day when God will make all things new again and there will be no more tears and no more suffering. Let us just pause in silence for a minute and reflect and give thanks. Let us pray. O God, our ruler and guide, in whose hands are the destinies of this and every nation, we give you thanks for the freedoms we enjoy in this land and for those who laid down their lives to defend them. We pray that we and all the people of Australia, gratefully remembering their courage and their sacrifice, may have grace to live in a spirit of justice, of generosity and of peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Be still, my soul, the Lord is on your side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to your God to order and provide. In every change, he Be still, my soul. 
tears are past, all safe and blessed, we shall meet at last. Friends in Christ, we come together to meet with God and to take our part in the building up of his church. We will lift up our hearts in thanks and praise, hear from God's holy word and pray for this world and ourselves. The Bible tells us to approach God confidently through our Lord Jesus Christ. As we do so, we must confess our sins seeking forgiveness through God's boundless goodness and mercy. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us draw near to God with sincerity and confidence, and pray together. God of all mercy, we humbly admit that we need your help. We have wandered from your way. We have sinned in thought, word and deed, and failed to do what is right. You alone can save us. Have mercy on us. Wipe out our sins and teach us to forgive others. Bring forth in us the fruit of your spirit, that we may live the new life to your glory. This we ask in the name of Jesus our Saviour. Amen. God desires that none should perish, but that all should turn to Christ and live. In response to his call, we acknowledge our sins. God pardons those who humbly repent and truly believe the gospel. Therefore, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Today we continue our series in Acts and we've reached that troubling incident of Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5. So if you have a Bible, you might like to open it at Acts 5 and follow along as we read and then as Wei Han preaches. Acts chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land. Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who had heard what had happened. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, Tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. Peter said to her, 
How could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out also. At that moment she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men, men came in, finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, welcome uh, to St. Alfred's uh, this morning. My name is Weihan, as you've heard, and uh, this is being filmed in my office here in CMS Victoria. Uh, it's a great privilege for me to be sharing this morning's Bible study as we continue in our series through the book of Acts. Uh, as we come to God's Word, I hope you'll have your Bible open and with you. Uh, please, let's pray together and ask for God's help. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for time to come to your Word. Please instruct us through the clarity of your Word, by the power of your Holy Spirit, for the glory of your Son. Our Lord Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, last week we were in Acts 4, and this week we are in Acts 5, and this great story of Ananias and Sapphira, uh, probably one of the more popular stories in the book of Acts. Maybe not. Well, context is everything, isn't it? So last week in Acts chapter 4, we uh, heard of the story of Joseph called Barnabas, who sold his field and gave so that the uh, poor and needy would be cared for within the first local early church community. Now, Acts 4, the end of Acts 4, sounds a lot like the end of Acts 2, if you look at it and flip back in your Bible. Uh, and from time to time, you, you meet Christians who kind of say, oh, if only we could go back to the early church, the church of Acts 2 and the church of Acts 4. And, and what a wonderful church it was. We read of how uh, the believers were of one heart and mind, and they uh, worshipped the Lord Jesus together. They came under His Word, and they fellowshiped over a fellowship meal, and they sold so that money would come in, and there would be no one uh, with need amongst them. And that's what happens at the end of Acts 4. We get another little snapshot of the, the beauty and the glory of the early church, and how Barnabas sells a field and brings the money, and and the poor and needy amongst them are cared for. Well, every now and then someone says, let's go back to the Acts 2 and Acts 4 church, you know. Uh, if only we could be that church again today. So I think that Acts 5 actually is in the Bible to remind us that the early church wasn't really perfect because on the back of Barnabas selling his field is Ananias and Sapphira and just like the church today, you know, the early church was, a, was that strange mix of glory and goodness from God and yet sinfulness and brokenness, just like the church today. So let's come uh, to the text. Uh, there was a man named Ananias who together with his wife Sapphira also sold a piece of property. So they were following after Barnabas. Now verse 2, with his wife's full knowledge, Ananias kept back some of the money. So immediately, we're on the mat with Ananias and Sapphira. Immediately, we know that this was a premeditated act. They were going to sell the field, but they were going to keep back some of the money. He brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet, just like Barnabas has done. And then Peter says in verse 3, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you've lied to the Holy Spirit and you've kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land. So immediately Peter knows. And we have to say that it's a word of knowledge, isn't it? It's how did this pastor know that this wasn't the full sum of money? Um, Peter knows and he calls out the sin for what it is. You've lied to the Holy Spirit. You've kept back some of the money. Uh, what, what made you think of doing such a thing, Peter says? You've lied not just to human beings. You just you haven't lied to me in the church. You've lied to God. That is the nature of the sin. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. Great fear seized all who had heard what happened. Some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and took him away to be buried. Now, this is, this is 
this is what I love about the Bible and what, what I really love about the New Testament. It's historical particularity. It, it has the feel of a real eyewitness account because here's this little bit of detail. Three hours later, we read in verse 7, his wife Sapphira came in not knowing what had happened. Now you just think about it. Peter is the pastor. Peter, who is supposed to love my sheep and feed my sheep, is what Jesus says to him at the end of John's Gospel. Peter has three hours to work out his pastoral response to Sapphira. Three hours to work out, what am I going to do? What am I going to say to her when she comes? And we have, to, we have to assume that Peter prayed about it and received wisdom from God about his pastoral duty towards this woman. And, and what he does is he doesn't accuse her. He doesn't say, hey, lady, I know what you and your husband have done. Uh, no, he asks an open question. Tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she says, that is the price. Then Peter says to her, how could you conspire to test the Spirit of God? Listen, the feet of those who buried your husband at the door, they will bury you also. They will carry you out also. Unlike with Ananias, after three hours of praying, Peter has, has kind of prayed it through. He, he's gone, I'll ask an open question, and she can either confess and repent, I'll give her that opportunity, or she will lie just like her husband with, and so be judged of God by God just like her husband was. Indeed, that's what happens. Uh, at that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. The young men came in, finding her dead, carried her out, buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. And we say, yeah, for sure, great fear seized the whole church, seized everyone. Now, let's just take a two steps back and and think about this for a moment. What would, be, what would it be like here at St. Alfred's if our pastor Peter had the same words of knowledge and kind of x-ray vision into our finances, our truth-telling or our lying? Well, what would it be like if Peter was like this Peter in Acts chapter 5 uh, with the capacity to pronounce the judgment of God? Have you done this? Is this what you've done? Well, the feet of the men who carried your husband out will carry you out also. You know, what, what if we were struck dead uh, for our sins? Great fear would seize us, wouldn't it? Well, this is a great account. It's a great story of something that happened in the life of the early church. And I think the account begs two questions that I want to help us answer. First question, what is the sin? What exactly is the sin of Ananias and Sapphira? And second question, where's the grace in this story? Where's the grace in this story? So firstly, uh, what is the sin? At a surface level, the sin seems pretty obvious. It's identified, you know. How, how is it that Satan has filled your heart and you've lied to the Holy Spirit? It's the sin of, of lying, isn't it? Uh, what might this sin look like in, in today's terms? So I'm coming to you from the Church Missionary Society. Uh, here at CMS, we've got four great words, pray, care, give, go. Uh, we want people to pray for our missionaries, we want people to care for our missionaries, we want people to give financially so that our missionaries can be supported, and ultimately we want pe people to consider the call of God to go as a missionary wherever the Lord might send you. Pray, care, give, go. Well. If you're going to say to someone, one of our link missionaries perhaps at St. Alfred's, if you go, I will pray faithfully for you. Well, you ought to. And if you don't, then you've lied to them and you've lied to God. If you say to someone, if you go, I will care for you. Well, what does caring for, for a missionary look like? It might be, I will faithfully respond to your email communications. I will write you letters of encouragement or send you an email of encouragement. Maybe when you're home, I will uh, care for you by putting together a lovely care package to welcome you back to Victoria. Well, if you say you're going to care for a missionary and you don't, well, that's lying and lying uh, not just to them, 
but to the Holy Spirit. If you say, if you go, I will support you financially, and you don't, well, that's lying to the missionary and lying to the Holy Spirit. Pray, care, give, and, and go. We sing, don't we, uh, songs to God. Uh, we, we sing songs like, you know, here I am, send me, the words of Isaiah 6. If we sing those songs, but don't, aren't genuinely open to God leading us to go or to do, then we are ultimately lying to God and lying to the Holy Spirit. Be very careful the songs that you sing, the words of promise that you make to God. Well, but is it just the sin of lying? I want to suggest that there's a deeper level uh, rebellion against God here. And that is, there is the sin of stealing glory. There is the sin of stealing glory. And the interaction between Acts 4 and Acts 5 gives us that clue. See, when Barnabas sold his field and gave so that there'd be no needy and poor in the church, what was going on? Um, he, he was giving glory to God, glory to the Holy Spirit who was busy in the early part of Acts, forming this wonderful people of God, forming this glorious church, the body of Christ here on earth, a, a body uh, characterized by love for one another and sacrificial sharing of their finances and resources together so there'd be none in need. And all that was was telegraphing to the world that, hey, I'm through my Holy Spirit bringing together a people in a wonderful, functional, loving community of faith. And all that was going to be to God's glory, to give glory to what God through the Holy Spirit was doing in, in forming this wonderful new people of God, this community of faith. And see, Ananias and Sapphira were effectively stealing that glory for themselves because they were saying, we can participate in that a little. We, we, can, we can show, sort of, that the Holy Spirit has led us to participate in this community of love and care and sacrificial giving. But actually, we're only going to do it halfway. We're going to sell the field and say, yeah, yeah, this is the money, this is great, but keep some, some of that money for ourselves, for our Bali holiday, you know, once COVID lets us get out of the country. And in so doing, it wasn't about the money, but it was about the heart attitude. It was about wanting a piece of that glory of God's for themselves without actually being genuine about it, without actually giving everything to God. Well, the New Testament has lots to say about the power, the pernicious power of money. Uh, in 1 Timothy 6, we read, the love, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So dear brothers and sisters, be, be very, very careful how you deal with your finances, how you steward your finances. The Bible tells us that money is a powerful spiritual force. You know, we feel the force of the words of verse 3. Peter says, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart? Um, Satan uses money to take us away from God. He, he, he use, finds ways of using money to get us to lie, to get us to steal God's glory. Uh, beware. Great fear ought to fill our hearts as we consider our stewardship of money. My observation is, uh, in our day and time, we excuse our lack of generosity too easily. We excuse our lack of generosity too easily. I, I know this myself, you know. Um, if you are watching this Bible study, this, this church service online, then that already puts you automatically in the top 2% of the world's wealthiest people. 98% of the world isn't as wealthy as you because they don't have access to the internet, they can't watch this online, or their internet isn't strong enough to watch this, vid this video. So, 
from that position of wealth, how do you steward that wealth for the people of God, for the kingdom of God, for the progress of the gospel of God throughout the world? Uh, that, that is a real question. I believe that you, like me, you, you probably excuse your lack of generosity too easily. Uh, we fall prey to the idea that, oh, the world is, is so full of need, what could I possibly do? And we, we get a kind of compassion fatigue. Uh, and my suggestion is, uh, avoid that. Be aware of that dynamic. Which leads me to my, the, the second question. You know, where, where is the grace? Where is the grace in this story? The first thing I want to say is, judgment is grace in this story. The, the pages of the Bible are filled with the grace of God. And we're used to thinking of grace as, as a nice, happy thing. But here, judgment is grace because the story of Ananias and Sapphira is really a warning. You know, there are deaths. Uh, bring forward the judgment of a holy God against uh, our sin and our, against our lack of generosity, against uh, all the things that are antithetical to God's view of the world, God's plan for His children in the body of Christ. You know, it's God's grace to us that we have this story because it's a forewarning of the judgment to come. Just like Hebrews 9 said, you know, it's, it's destined for all of us to die once and then to face the judgment. The Bible is clear. Each of us will be judged one day for our deeds before him. And this story is an appeal, if you know the Lord Jesus, to not take him for granted. If you've received the gift of the gospel and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Do not receive the gift and then park him in a corner of your life and then run your life as if you're still in charge. No, the Holy Spirit is the sovereign Lord God of the universe. And if you've received him, he's in charge of your life. And if he tells you, or if in your community of faith, the movement of the Spirit is sell that field and provide, then sell that field and provide. Parking the Holy Spirit in a corner or taking half the message or responding halfway uh, places us in a position of great danger, just like Ananias and Sapphira. Now, if you're new to the church and if you're new to Christian things, then we have to say this next part, that the gospel is grace. The gospel is the good news. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died for you. The gospel is that Jesus took the riches of God, sitting at the right hand of God, and made himself poor and nothing so that in Christ we might receive those riches, the riches of the full inheritance of children of God. And so now, as Christians, if you have received forgiveness and reconciliation through Jesus, through the cross, uh, we are imbued with his riches. We've been comforted by him and now we can comfort others we've received his riches and so now we can be stewards in order to bless others and to provide others we are rich in christ and now we can be poor make ourselves poor so that others might be enriched in him uh, that is the gospel of grace isn't it having received from god how much more then we ought to give and provide for others. First within the church, so that there may be none of need within us, and then uh, as a blessing to the world. So as I close, two points. Don't steal God's glory. Don't steal the Holy Spirit's glory. He is in the business of forming for himself a people, the church, a people of of powerful integrity and of powerful purpose, that there might be none of need, that the gospel might go ahead to the ends of the world, that the church might stand as a beacon for how humanity can live together, relate together and flourish together. But don't go into it half-baked. Don't steal half the glory of God by keeping back for yourself 
stuff that really the Holy Spirit is saying, it's all, it's all for God. Don't steal God's grace. Second thing as I close, instead lean into God's grace. Respond to the Holy Spirit's leading. And especially from this story in the area of how we steward our finances. Uh, you might not be able to solve you know, the, the problems of all the poor in the world, but is there one person, is there one family that you can relate to and connect with and pray for? Uh, here at CMS, that, that's what we encourage people to do. Don't, don't, don't try and support the whole missionary society. Pick one person, one missionary unit that you can partner with. Pray with them. Con contribute financially to provide for them. And then through them, learn the stories of your brothers and sisters in Christ in the majority of the world, the 98% of the world that's less well-off than we are, and do what you can for them. Operate relationally in that way and lean into the power of God's grace uh, to motivate us, to assure us, encourage us, and, and finally, to give us joy as we serve Him uh, from where we are, from what He has given us and put in our hands. Uh, that's my prayer for each of us today as we reflect, as we've reflected together on the story of Ananias and Sapphira. Uh, God bless you. I hope you'll keep reading and praying through this story and reflecting on it in the week ahead. Amen. Who else commands all the hosts of heaven? Who else could make every king bow down? can whisper in darkness trembles only a holy God what are the beauty demands such praises what are the splendor outshines the sun what are the majesty rules with justice only Oh
Our Lord and Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer. Thank you that we can do this. As the old hymn reminds us, what a privilege it is to carry everything to you in prayer. We rejoice this is possible through Jesus, our Saviour and Redeemer. Jesus promised you will hear us when we ask in faith. Receive now our prayers. Lord, we have learned of Anias and Sapphira today. We know from Scripture you are a God who knows our deepest thoughts, our desires and our deeds. There is nothing hidden from you. Help us to be always truthful with you and with others, that we will, will be honest in all our dealings and not stoop to lie or cheat anyone or you in any way. Lord, the peoples of the world face a growing number of challenges to peace and security, as well as disasters and perils of nature and COVID-19. We ask you to guide with your wisdom and power the leaders of the nations so that everyone may live in peace and mutual trust. It's our prayer too, the richer nations will together provide and share enough vaccine to enable all peoples of this world to receive it and help to overcome this coronavirus. We remember this day the Anzacs, those service men and women from Australia and New Zealand who have faithfully served their country. Thank you for them. We pray for them, their families and for ourselves, whose freedom was won at such cost. Thank you for the peace and security this brought. Make us a people jealous for peace and hasten the day when nations shall not lift up sword against nation. We pray for our governments, commonwealth, state and councils. Give them and all who serve in public life wisdom and skill, imagination and energy. Protect them from corruption and the temptation of being self-serving. Grant them compassion and a sense of humanity. We pray too for family, friends and neighbours who don't know you. Keep us faithful in our prayers for them. Give us the strength to be always willing to speak of you and help us to show forth the fruit of the Spirit in our lives by the way we act and in what we say at all times. Help us in all we do to live lives that bring glory to you in all we do and say. Help us to run our race as your people, with purpose and perseverance, always looking toward Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. We pray for those in need of any kind, for those known to us at St Luke's, St Alfred's or elsewhere, who are hurting, in need or suffering abuse. We pray, Heavenly Father, you will hear our prayer for them as we bring them before you now. Just leave a space for that. We commend to your fatherly care, merciful God, those we have prayed for. Meet their needs. Give them patience and a firm trust in your goodness. Help those who care for them. Bless them this week, wherever they are. Provide healing, meet their needs and protect them. May they feel your presence and your love surrounding them. Give them wise and caring friends. Finally, Lord, as these prayers do not cover the full nature of our concerns, there is a brief time where we bring our own needs. What is on our hearts and minds this day or our praise and thanks to you for what you are doing in our lives or the lives of others. We'll just pause for that. To conclude, I invite you to join me in praying the Lord's Prayer together. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done, be on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. My fellow bananas, it is with great honour that I announce the triumphant return of our most beloved and iconic school holiday program, Going Bananas, this July. Now, COVID tried to take this program from us last year. And while we were forced on online for a time, I am pleased to announce that we are back in 2021 bigger and stronger than ever. Now, if you'll allow me to be candid for a moment, this is an opportunity for all bananas to come together and unite and bring our school holiday program back into the red. Red? Yellow. Anyway, here is our secretary of plate with a few details. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Of course, uh, it's very important that we all pull together to make this program great again. So we need volunteers to help out in a myriad of opportunities. We need people to work in registration. We need people to work in kitchen. We need people to work uh, praying. We need people to work in the car park, as well as people with the children themselves in the program. Of course, uh, there's some great opportunities and it's with great excitement I announced that we are going to be pre-filming some of our sections this year because of COVID. And that means that we need actors and performers of various kinds to come together and make this program uh, great. So to register your involvement, go to the website www.stalfreds.org, go to the Get Involved section and sign yourself up or talk to any one of our esteemed banana leaders. I'm talking about Madam President Naomi Bird, me, Secretary of Plate Ross Kerno, or Catherine Kopeck, Emma Squires, or Joel Hanson. I'm going to hand back to Madam President. Okay, thank you so very much. Now, are there any questions? Oh, 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 oh. So when is the program happening? Oh, great question, Barry. Uh, the program is happening uh, from Monday, July 5th until Friday, the 9th of July. It's the second week of the school holidays every morning. Oh, oh, so uh, will, will there be a Sunday service uh, for the program this year? Well, well, Bobby, it all depends. It's a really good question. It all depends on what our current restrictions and requirements are. Uh, uh, will, will our leaders need to attend training? Ah, uh, Bill, fabulous question. That is a yes. All leaders will need to, to come to our training, which is four consecutive Saturdays from June 13th. Now, now, no more questions. That's all I can have to say on this matter. Now, please sign up soon uh, and to ensure that we can organise and be perfect. Thanks so much. As we come to the end of today's online service, would you join with me in this closing prayer? Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleases.
Would I know? 